Today on What About Gaming, we will show you the top 5 What About Gaming episodes of 2012. But this time, it's the top 5 chosen by a fan. <coughs> it's Zach in Games. You have to check out his channel. There's lots of cool Let's Plays going on. And his most recent Let's Plays were Land Shake for me. Check it out and check out his other Let's Plays. Well, here's his top 5. Starting with number 5, Quackshot Starry Donald Duck for Sega Genesis. Enjoy! The game itself is very simple to play. Press A to dash, B to shoot, and C to jump. If you want to dash and jump, press A and C at the same time. Well, look what I have to do to dash and jump. It's very uncomfortable. Well, at least the game gives you the option to change the controls in the main menu. But you have to set the controls before starting the game because when you start the game, there's no coming back. So choose the controls you, you think that are best for you and start playing. I want the best controls for me, so let's see. A for dashing is good, B for jumping is good, and C for shooting is good. Let's see if the game has this option. What? This option is not available? Well, at least the game has an option that I think is good. Instead of using the A button to dash, use the C button to dash. Instead of using the C button to shoot, use the A button to shoot. It seems good. Let's try it out. I don't know, I think they should just let it was saying whatever button you wanted to fill the options. Yeah, I think that's like Street Fighter where you can set all the buttons manually instead of having presets on the buttons. I think that's better. Yeah, I mean, why wouldn't they do that? Yeah. It's like they're forcing you to play the way they want you to play it, you know? I don't know what were they thinking, but yeah, I have to play this way. Ah, the controls are still awful. I prefer the original controls. The problem isn't on the game itself, it's on the Sega Genesis controller. Some of the buttons are hard to reach. So why not you use the 3 button controller? It has bigger buttons than the 6 button one. Yeah, that might work. It's still awful. No way, it's worse. Yeah, Garp is doing something wrong, man. Here, let me see. Uh, yep, it's really awful. In this aspect, the Super NES controller is better, because you can easily reach the 4 buttons only by using your thumb. So we'll open up the 6 button controller, which feels better than the 3 button controller. Anyway, at the end of the desert, I met a girl that says that I need a key to go into the ruins. She says that I have to go back to Duckburg to get an item called Hero Key. So go back to Duckburg and get the key from the guy at the end of the level. You know, it's funny, like, they didn't have to leave. You could have just waited for him to get a key and get back on the plane. Yeah, that, that, that makes more sense. Video games. Yep. So go back to Duckburg and get the key from the guy at the end of the level. Well, at least I don't have to play the whole level again to meet this guy and get the key. When I get the key, I have to go back to Mexico and use the key to open the rooms. Keep going ahead and you'll find a green block that goes up and down. And when you shoot it can be used as a lift. But what really matters is what's behind that block. It seems it's a turkey. And this turkey can be used to replenish your power. A bird eating another bird. That is crazy. Well, at least it's not another duck. That would be cannibalism. Transylvania is a dark place. In this level there are bats and there are also waterfalls. You can't even fall in the waterfalls or you die instantly. Now why would Donald Duck die in the water? I mean, he's a duck, can't he swim? At the end of the first part of Dracula's castle, you see a place that sees you are going to die if you fall in, but you have to fall there. Now you are in another water level. No wait, it's another water level. 
Remember at the beginning of Transylvania where Donald would die by only falling in the water? But here, the, here there's no problem. Why? When I leave the ship and talk to the Viking, he says that he doesn't have any Viking diary. He says the diary may be lost on the ice, on South Pole. So he gives me an ancient Viking plunger, which may help me there. Ancient Viking plunger? Seriously? What were they thinking? He says this plunger can be used to fly with by catching things that fly, in other words, birds. So now call the plane, go to South Pole and use the green plunger of the bird next to the place where I find the Viking. To use it the bird, press up and, and then press B. Donald will shoot up. When you have the final boss in the game, someone, maybe King Arusha, says that Donald is worthy of the treasure. When Donald opens the treasure chest, here appears a stone figurine of Duck Princess. He says that it's just a plain stone figurine of Duck Princess. What are expect need to be, Donald? A treasure chest full of gold? Such a shame, right? What are you talking about, Donald? This thing may be worth billions, you can sell it on the internet and get rich! Anyway, Donald meets Daisy at the airport and then he says he's gonna give her the statue, but Donald's nephew throws the statue on the ground and maybe breaks. Inside it is a jewel necklace made with gold. So Donald gives it to Daisy. After that, the credits roll. And after the credits, the end. Is it really how the game ends? Is it really how the game ends? I went through all that stuff in the game just to see this ridiculous ending. Well, Daisy Duck, you can have this ridiculous treasure because for me this is worth nothing. And this game is also worth nothing. Yeah, you know, this game can, can be good sometimes, but it is almost 100% disappointing. Yeah. This game deserves the plunger. Now, number 4 is Little Unfortunate on the Super Nintendo. It is a great game despite some problems with the pistol calibration. Enjoy! Alright, let's try to play Little Enforcers on this regular TV. I think this time we can calibrate the pistol now. And, oh yeah, ah, there we go. Right, right in the middle of the. Nah, I'm, I'm too close. No. Okay. Okay, but it's not working. I can't even shoot the exit button. Oh yes. Is it working good? Yeah, I think it is. Okay. I uh, here you have to set the set the game in, in a regular Super NES controller. Game level, let's play normal, right? Yeah, that's good. Oh, I love this, this mission. I have no idea how many people can oh, this car can fit. But look, <laughs> yeah. there, there's... Oh, it's final over. No, why didn't miss you? Just keep re repeating the same the same line. You miss me, you miss me. Oh yeah, now it's the boss. Holy It's a guy with, with oh better. Well that bug you know any better than you but what you have to press oh, start here. Sure. Yep. You're missing everything. Yeah, I'm terrible at this game. Oh, yeah! Stage clear. <laughs> it's a half. It's a 50. Oh, that's very bad. Let's see if, if I can at least increase the level or. Miss? Zero? What? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's because I used some of the, some of the credits. So <laughs> chicken? <laughs> Is that? Can you shoot the chicken? I have no idea what happens. Maybe I'll lose a life if I if I do this. <laughs> <laughs> or like ten more chickens will come to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I have to shoot the chicken. 
Oh man, I missed. Reload. Yeah. Whoa! Flying <laughs> <laughs> all over the. Now it's the boss, yeah. What? He cut your wall with. What? And what are these swords of us? What is that? Oh man! What? Why isn't it, isn't it working? Oh! What do I have to do to hit him? I just I, know, I think it's important to score me. Oh, game over! <laughs> right in the boss! Number 3 is the Christmas special, The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Since of the end of the world as predicted on the Maya calendar was closed, December 21st, 2012, why not play a game that has everything to do with the end of the world? Enjoy! Majora's Mask is one of the few games that require the players to buy an accessory called the Expansion Pack, which is a 4 MB RAM memory expansion for the Nintendo 64. It expands the system's 4 MB of RAM memory to 8 MB of RAM memory. These additional megabytes are required in order for this game to be played, otherwise nothing happens. But back then you could find the Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask Collector's Edition, which has the expansion pack included with the game, so players wouldn't have to buy a separate expansion pack. What's the expansion pack used for? Well, the expansion pack can be used in many different ways, but in this game it is used to have enhanced graphics. Yet the Ocarina of Time and compare the graphics to Majora's Mask, you will easily see the difference. But why does it need an expansion pack anyway? I mean, Ocarina of Time was pretty much the same game as this and it didn't need a freaking expansion pack. The whole reason for this is because the game was originally meant to be released for Nintendo 64 DD. But Nintendo thought it would be a good idea to release it as a regular game instead of being a, an expansion game. It needs an expansion pack because Nintendo 64 DD has extra RAM memory. But now that the game is not an expansion game, it needs an expansion pack in order to be played. It is basically the same thing as with The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time Master Quest. And this one was cancelled for the Nintendo 64 DD. But it was released for Nintendo GameCube. In this game you can get masks from the bosses you beat and the masks can give you different powers. Reminds me of Mega Man. The most important masks in this game are the Deku Mask, the Goro Mask and the Zoro Mask. With the Deku Mask you can fly. With the Zoro Mask you can dive and walk on the water without the need of breathing air. This is similar to the blue tunic on Ocarina of Time because it has the same properties. And with the Goro Mask you can roll around. Literally, because you can roll like a rock. And it is very fast, so trips to far places will never be boring again. I can't imagine people selling Goron Masks on TV. That would be pretty funny to watch. Actually, Goron Masks would be pretty useful in real life. Except they would make people sick, I guess. Well, I can only say that Gorons have iron stomach. Or maybe rock stomach, because that's what Gorons are made of. Rocks. The battle against this boss is a bit more harder than the battles against the other bosses, because his pattern is quite unpredictable. And one cool thing that this boss can do is that it can shoot lasers from its eyes. It kind of reminds me of Nana from Lady Mansion. Well, that's it for today's game. Merry Christmas! Christmas. What the hell is going on? I think it's an earthquake. It's the moon! It's heading toward the earth! Is it the end of the world with living? Nah, don't be silly, someone can explain why the Cards for the Nintendo 64. Yeah, that's a ridiculous game. You can mix computers with animals and you have scars. Watch the video. In this ridiculous futuristic racing game, you take control of wild animals. To understand what the game is, get any game from the Mario Kart franchise and any game from the F Zero franchise, mix them together, and what you get is number one. F0 with items or number 2 Mario Kart with futurist racing cars. Yeah, but without futurist racing cars. You have animals instead. That's right, animals. Get every animal you can think of and then use them as cars. This is the idea of scars for the N64. Scars was released November 30, 1998 for PC, PlayStation and Nintendo 64. It's a racing game like any racing game that has items which can be used as weapons. Some guy from a famous gaming website compared Scars to Mario Kart N64. Now my goal here is not to compare Scars to Mario Kart N64 in any means. This looks nothing like a panther. Yeah, now that you say, I, I think we're right. Uh, 
I know some cars do look good, like the Scorpion, the Mantis, for example, but I don't know. Or even the shark. The shark is not. The shark is not too bad. Yeah, it, it looks like an actual shark, in fact. Yep, but the panther. Oh. What is it of? Uh, and it's funny because it's also the best car in the game, so. Yep. I don't see a panther here. But to open those features, you have to type a cheat code that is given to you in the end of every championship and every challenge. Which is the most weak slash ridiculous way to make it through the whole game. And also, every time you race a championship, no matter you win or lose, and no matter which championship you have raced, the long lasting credits of the game are shown. But fortunately, you can skip those long lasting credits. The cheat codes given to you in the ending of every championship are used to open other championships and the cheat codes and the challenges open new cards. I don't know what they were thinking when they came up with this. I mean, typing cheat codes to progress through the game? Seriously? And whenever I type a valid cheat code, the game does save, but it needs a control pack to do that, and it takes a lot of space to save, most specifically 32 blocks out of 123, which is a bit more than a quarter of the space available. I don't want to waste my available memory with this ridiculous game. I want to save the games that don't need to type a shit code every time I do something in the game. But if I just want to play a championship without opening new cards or tracks, I just don't type the cheat code then. It's like playing a game but without wanting to beat the game. So the game thinks you have never played the game unless you type a cheat code and then it saves. This game allows you not to open up new features in the game if you don't want to. This is the only game that gives you cheat codes to progress through it. Other games don't. Instead of making you type cheat codes like Scars does, other games simply open up new features as you progress in the game. So nice, open up a new feature in Scars. Hey, stop using cheat codes. I'm not using cheat codes, that's how the game works. Sort of. Um, okay. Besides this ridiculous idea, typing the cheat code by using the R and Z button is annoying. The item selection of the game doesn't give you a random item. You can actually choose the item you want to use. You just have to know where is the item you want to use and you can have two different items per player. Look at the left upper corner of the screen and you'll see two items. The bigger icon is the item I'm using right now. The smaller icon is the next item. Now I have a missile and a... I don't know. So, also apparently we got the flux capacitor from Back to the Future in this. Yeah, it seems like it's a rip-off. Yeah, uh, well... Uh, I, I mean, they were really thinking of the movie when they when they created this item. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's a rip-off. It's not like a coincidence or something. It is a rip-off. Well, to me it's a plus point for them for referencing the movie. I don't know. Yeah, that's a great movie, but yeah. Uh, at least I can get reminded of the movie when I play this. Yep. But on the other hand, it'll make me want to go and watch the movie instead of playing this. So I don't know. Yeah. I think you are right. Like, if you are playing the game and you say this item the game. And you remember the movie? I want to see this. I want to watch the movie right now. And then you forget about the game. Go get your get your DVD of the back Back to the Future and start watching the movie and completely forget about the game. See, that's why it's the first point. Yeah, I think you are right. Also, the music of this level is cheesy. I mean, it's rather annoying. Electric guitar solo is ridiculous. Just listen to this. But this game couldn't get any worse. I'm sorry, but fortunately you were wrong. Get a multiplayer feature in this game. One person plays cars isn't ridiculous enough. You can call your friends and say, Hey, you wanna play cars and look ridiculous while playing with the animal shaped race cars the game has to offer? Yeah, imagine four animal shaped racing cars on the screen. Now it can get any more ridiculous. Why did they think it would be a great idea mixing computers with animals? Yeah, it's some kind of 
mad scientist invention that didn't work out well. I mean, animal shaped racing cars, cheat codes to open up regular features in the game, and using your memory pack to save the game. It can't, can't get, get any more ridiculous. ridiculous. And finally, number one is the Halloween episode Luigi's Mansion for Nintendo GameCube. Yeah, that's a good game, and the water mystery will never be solved. Why does Luigi have to get all the money he finds in the mansion? And I thought the point of the game was just ghost hunting. And Ghost Hunters is a piece of crap. Watch the video. As the title says, Luigi is the protagonist of the game instead of Mario. In this game, Luigi wins a mansion and contest he never entered. Despite not having entered any contest, Luigi tells Mario about the mansion. They decided to meet up outside mansion that same evening. Isn't Luigi at least a little surprised or scared about winning a mansion and contest he never entered? No, he's okay actually. It's not like, oh, let's get in my newly won mansion and see how cool it is. And the sound effects are also pretty good, but the Portuguese 3000 lacks some sound effects. It is too silent, which is not like a real vacuum cleaner. But I think if it was too loud, it will make people who play the game very irritated because the vacuum cleaner will be too loud, so it's okay, I think. The graphics on the game are also pretty good, especially for such an early game. And talking about graphics, did you know that Luigi's Mansion for GameCube was originally meant to be released in stereoscopic 3D? Unfortunately, that never happened, since 3D TVs were not as widespread back then, and they were also very expensive compared to 3D TVs nowadays. But the GameCube system does allow stereoscopic 3D, but to do so we will require a special accessory, which was also very expensive to develop and sell, so the accessory would have almost the same price as the GameCube itself. But Nintendo finally made it! They developed a 3D system called Nintendo 3DS and they are making Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon for 3DS. So Luigi goes to his newly won mansion to find Mario, now it's ghost hunting time. And no, I'm not talking about that crappy TV show, Ghost Hunters. And also, if you check the furniture in the gallery the Game Boy Horror, Luigi says that the furniture here must be really expensive. He says the share will fetch a pretty penny. What? Luigi is only thinking about the money? I think he thinks it's Wario. Luigi, I think you should really stop thinking about money and think more about saving Mario. Right when you beat the first gallery ghost level, you can go to the next room and there you find another gallery ghost. She's called Lydia and she's brushing her hair in front of the mirror. How can she see herself if she's a ghost? I mean, she's a ghost and ghosts don't have reflections. When you get Game Boy Horror and search Lydia, a glitch happens. Her reflection suddenly appears. Actually, her reflection is partially visible when Luigi is not looking at her. But when you use the Game Boy Horror to check, her reflection becomes completely visible. That switch opens the trapdoor. When you open the trapdoor, lots of bulls will appear. We finally get to see bulls on the game. And now we have to find all of the bulls in the mansion. On a room, you find ghosts that can only be seen in the mirror. That doesn't really make sense since ghosts don't have reflections, but it's supposed to be hard, so it's okay. Now, one thing that was supposed to have reflection is fire. Here we have this torch that is lit, but you can't see the fire in the mirror. After you get rid of the ghosts on the mirror room, you find a chest, and inside this chest is a fire emblem. Fire emblem is also a game made by Nintendo, but today's game is Luigi's Mansion. Actually, Egan calls it Fire Element Metal. With the Fire Element Metal, we can find elemental ghosts and also beat some of those ghosts. The Element Metals will also be used to solve puzzles in some rooms, similar to the Legend of Zelda games, where I have to use a fire arrow to light up candles that cannot be reached. Here in the mirror room, you have to vacuum the fire on the torch. After that, you can expel the fire by pressing the L button. You have to use the fire to light up those candles, so you can leave the room. After beating Melody, you get the key to the dining room. There you find a ghost called Mr. Lugs and he is a glutton. Look at him, even that he is still eating. The Game Boy Horror says he ate himself to death, but still wasn't satisfied. Oh, gross. To make him appear, get fire and light up the candles. When he's visible, get the Poltergeist 3000 and suck the food he's eating. A ghost waiter will come to serve him. You have to vacuum the waiters, because they can't serve Mr. Lux. If he gets served, you have to set his food again. He starts spitting fireballs at you. Maybe it was something really spicy he ate. All you have to do is wait for him to almost spit his guts out. He will get exhausted, and there's a time for you to attack. Go across the table and vacuum him up. Keep in mind that he's really heavy, so he use all of his strength to avoid him. After beating him, you will get a treasure chest full of money. Yeah, money! 
why are we getting money anyway? Have you ever thought why are we getting money? What's the point of getting money? Does Luigi think he's Wario again? I thought the point of the game was to save Mario. Maybe that's not Luigi, maybe that's Wario disguised as Luigi and we, and we have to figure out why. Yeah, maybe you're right. After you catch Spooky, get the Game Boy Horror and check the dog house. You'll be sucked in and will appear on a graveyard at the back of the mansion. What kind of sick person would put a graveyard on their backyard? Well, a sick person. Toad says that there is something terrible in the well. Okay, let's go to the well and find out what's in there. On the bottom of the well, we'll see Mario stuck in a painting. Okay Mario, you jumped inside the painting and now you can't go back? It's very simple, you have to kill the boss and get a power star. That's what you're supposed to do to jump off from the painting. When you go back and talk to Toad, he says that Mario has dropped some items. A hat. A hat? But I saw that Mario was wearing his hat. He also says that Mario has dropped a glove. A glove? But I saw that Mario was wearing both gloves. Maybe it's someone else's glove. And about the hat, I have it. It is Mario's hat. Anyway, Toad says that Mario has also brought a shoe, a letter, and a star. Oh yeah, that's a common thing for people to carry around the star. Yeah, imagine if you lost your star and you had to ask your friend to help you find it. Hey, I did find my star, can you help me find it? Yeah, sure, of course. Here we go. Well, thank you. You're welcome. When we take the letter we found to Madame Clairvoya, she reads the letter for me. It says, look out for booze, Luigi. Yeah, thanks for the warning, Mario. That letter would be way more useful if it got delivered to me before I enter the mansion. Madame Clairvoyant says that the spirits are telling her that Mario is imprisoned within a painting. Oh really? I just saw that! Thanks for stating the obvious! And she repeats what she said about Mario being imprisoned within a painting. Stop it! I get it! Mario is imprisoned within a painting! And that's all she says. Madame Clairvoyant, I hate you. You just keep stating the obvious over and over. You are useless! Enter this room and get rid of all of the ghosts. Here we will find a thing that inverts the gravity field. There is something similar to this gravity inverting thing on Super Mario Galaxy. And also on Super Mario Galaxy 2, in a galaxy where you can invert the gravity field. Anyway, use it to fall on the table and open the chest that's on the table. Inside the chest we will find the ice element metal. It can be used basically to freeze some ghosts. It can also be used to freeze water. Let's try it. Some ghosts and shy guys will appear. Get rid of them to proceed. The next room is an observatory. And here we'll find a telescope. Get next to it and use it. When we use it, we'll see the moon. After that, part of the observatory disappears. And when we see, we are in outer space. And Luigi said that he wanted to visit the outer space someday. Luigi, your dream has become true. We'll see what looks like a bridge to other planets. We'll see half a planet, and on that planet we'll see a star. Maybe that's a star Mario has lost. We'll see a meteorite. Get the meteorite and shoot it at the moon. Shooting the meteorite at the moon is hard, because you can't aim. So you have to guess where the meteorite will be shot. When the meteorite hits the moon, the moon explodes. Literally, because there's fire and everything. Congratulations Luigi, you just exploded at the moon. Are you glad about that? Does it make you feel better? When the moon explodes, a bridge to the planet appears. A bridge on the space. What's that? Rainbow boat? Cross the bridge and get the star. Take the star to Madame Clairvoyant. Let's see what kind of crap she has to tell us this time. Once again, she's saying the obvious. She says that Mario was captured by King Boo, and Mario is telling her for me to be careful with Boo's. Oh, really? First, I'll bring you the letter that says exactly that. And now you are saying that Mario is talking to you? Madame Clairvoyant, stop being so useless and tell us what we don't know. When the ghost is gone, the washroom is lit. Look at the wall and you'll see a poster that says Monsters. In the poster we have on the left Boris Karloff as the monster, who is mistakenly referred to as Frankenstein. On the middle we have Christopher Lee as Dracula, and on the right we have Lon Chaney Jr. as the Wolfman. A reference to the classic Universal Horror movies. This poster just sets the atmosphere for the whole game. That's a cool addition to the game. Anyway, we are going to screw up the poster, so say goodbye to the poster. Get the Poltergeist 3000 and wrecking up the poster. When you try to do that, the poster is transformed into a whole poster that says, get out of here. And the poster drains our HP every time we do that. On the next room, we will find a ghost called Nana. To make Nana appear, drop the yarn balls, vacuum them up and shoot them at Nana. But be careful, because when you get a ball, Nana will start following you and shooting lasers from her eyes. Okay, she can shoot laser from her eyes? That's a weird thing for a ghost to do. So she can shoot laser from her eyes. 
I'm wondering if she could shoot laser from her eyes when she was alive. After catching Slim back shot, let's go to the next room. The next room is a projection room. Yeah, a projection room. There's lots of films, speakers and a film projector. Just awesome. I'm wondering what movies we have here. Maybe any Frankenstein movie, or maybe any Dracula movie, or maybe The Wolfman. Let's find out. After catching them, we'll find Mario's shoe. Now it seems we don't have more choice but to take Mario's glove and Mario's shoe to Madame Clovoya. Ugh, let's get angry twice in a row. She says that Mario's glove is still sweaty. She says that Mario is crying out for us. She says that wolves have strange powers and when the wolves get our number, their power grows stronger. But they are afraid of the Porter S3000. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Much of those things are already known. Now for Mario's shoe. She says that the soul is so worn as if she's walking a thousand miles. She says that the spirits are coming back to her. And she says that she can see the scene. She says that she can see Bowser. She says that she thought that Mario has soundly defeated Bowser. She says that maybe King Boo has revised Bowser and that's horrible for us. So now the spirits are gone. And finally she told us something we didn't know. She says that it was less of her power. She says that her work here is done. She says that she can go back to her painting and she thanks Luigi for that. She asks us to vacuum her up. Sure, we'll do it. Finally, she'll get what she deserves. That's what you get for being so useless. Okay, that's the only ghost that wants to go back to their painting. You can easily catch her because she won't struggle. On the third floor, we find a room full of deer heads hanging on the walls and leopard skin rugs with heads. That would be a really scary place to find in a haunted mansion. Just heads everywhere. All of these dead animals remind me of some several animal protection organization protesting about Mario wearing a tanuki suit on Super Mario 3D Land. They said that the game was encouraging younger children to kill animals and wear fur. Ah, come on, that's ridiculous! After beating bull losses, we get the key to open Area 4. Now this is the end of Area 3. Let's go to the lab to fortification ice the ghost of Area 3. When we open the door that leads to Area 4, a lightning strikes the machine, which causes a blackout. The blackout is a good time to find some easter eggs. Enter the Area 4 and go to the telephone room. Telephone room? Wait, am I playing Luigi's Mansion or The Legend of Zelda Nick's Awakening? Ring ring, we're here speaking. A telephone is ringing, answer it. When we answer the phone, someone on the other side asks who's speaking, and we can either answer that it's Luigi or Bowser. If we say that it's Luigi, the person on the other side says Toad. Toad says he's scared because everything's so dark and he's afraid of the dark. After that phone call, another phone starts ringing. This time it's Iget. Why isn't he using the Game Boy War to communicate with us? Iget says that there's a ghost on the roof who's called Uncle Grimly, and he says that he hides on the darkest places, such as a haunted mansion without electricity. And he gets us that my only chance to catch him is when the bar is out. So let's go look for Uncle Grimly before turning the power back on. And back to the first phone call. If we answer that this foster was speaking, Toad says, Eek! To turn the power back on, we have to go to the basement and activate a switch. During the blackout, all of the ghosts are back, so we'll find out how annoying those ghosts are, because they will scare Luigi everywhere they appear. So it will be really annoying. Ah, this is going to be a long journey to the basement. Literally, because the mesh is huge. At the basement, we'll find the switch that turns the power back to on. Activate the switch and the lights will be back. Now the lights are back and now we don't have to face those annoying ghosts anywhere. Here, we'll get a key that opens the clockwork room on the third floor. Back on the third floor, we'll find the clockwork room. Here we'll find some toy soldiers. No, we are not talking about the game toy soldiers. They are the clockwork soldiers. As you can see, they are ghosts. Ghost toy soldiers? Do toys also have life? And now they are dead? That's weird. In the room we find some clocks. Make them work and after that, the clockwork soldiers will come at us to try to kill us. To catch them, we have to vacuum up their valves and after that they are vulnerable to the Photographs 3000. Catching them is almost as hard as catching them means Henry or Norville because we can only vacuum up one at a time while the other toy soldiers are following us and trying to shoot us. After catching those ghosts we enter the guest room, which is an upside down room and here we find a ghost called Soupy who's sleeping. To make her wake up we have to make her wet her bed. Oh and talking about that, did you notice that her name is Soupy? I mean there's P on her name, but there's a different kind of P, it is spelled P-E-A. Anyway, to make her wake up, throw some water at her. 
After doing that, she's vulnerable. After catching Soupy, a treasure chest will appear on the ceiling, which is actually the floor. To get access to that chest, leave the room and the room will be rotated back to normal. There is nothing important inside this chest, just money. After that, we get a key to open a room in the basement. This is the pipe room. And as we enter it, we'll see what seems to be a waterfall. But this is actually a water leakage. Holy crap, if I saw in my house a water leakage like that, I would be very worried about that. Because that leakage will take over my entire house, and that wouldn't be nice. Here we'll see what seems to be toxic water, or maybe the sewers the mansion. Either way, it's toxic. That room is the artist's studio, and here we'll find the artist himself, Vincent Van Gogh. A clear reference to Vincent Van Gogh. On the room we can see paintings from loft tables he created. Vincent Van Gogh makes his creations come out of the paintings and come after us. So now we have to catch those ghosts. That will be easy. What makes catching those ghosts easier is that they will appear in the same place. So we can easily send them and catch them at once. After catching those ghosts we can catch Vincent Van Gogh. Catching him is almost as easy as catching Madame Glavoy and almost as easy as catching Uncle Grimley. Catching Vincent Van Gogh's ghost was harder than catching himself. After catching Vincent Van Gogh, a key will come out from a painting he was working on. And here we'll also find the last bow of the game. When we beat King Boo, Luigi will get King Boo's crown. Now look at the crown. Why is this crown different from the crown King Boo wears in other games? I guess that's because it's the first game that King Boo appears, but it still won't answer my question. After that, Iget calls us and says for Luigi to get Mario painting and take it to the lab. When Luigi grabs the painting, he holds it on top of his head. Now Luigi is speaking his link from The Legend of Zelda. When the painting is taken to the lab, we can transform Mario back to normal, but first we'll see the ghost we caught on area 4. Now we can transform Mario back to normal. When Mario is finally outside the painting, Luigi starts laughing at Mario. Okay Luigi, I know that you are happy to see Mario back to normal, but you are acting really weird. That's creepy. Actually, there's nothing funny because it's an evil laughter. Just listen to Luigi laughing. I don't get it. I guess that's not the real Luigi. I think that I was right when I said that this is Warrior disguised as Luigi. But I'm not sure because he never took his disguise off. Well, I guess I'll get my vacuum cleaner and get rid of some of these annoying ghosts in my house. Wait! You need this. Take it. And don't get yourself killed! Ah! Alright, that's it for the top 5 What About Gaming episodes of 2012. As chosen by Zekison of all games. And again, check out this channel because there is a lot of cool Let's Plays going on. Bye! Bye! Ha ha ha!